911 emergency. My, someone has broken into my house. I'm hiding in the closet. They're in the house now. Um, yes, yes, they are. I just saw them walk into the attic. I have a. Is it a man or a woman? I, I think it was a man. What's your name, ma'am? Uh, Sandra Bullock. Sandra Bullock was in a near-death situation. Her home was stalked for days until a 39-year-old man named Joshua decided to break in and make Sandra's life a living hell. He antagonized her and called Sandra his wife until one day he decided to take his own life because he couldn't spend it with Sandra Bullock. So let's get into it. Sandra Bullock is one of the biggest actresses in Hollywood, but unfortunately, whenever you're that big of a star, you have a target on your back. Sandra Bullock's horrifying encounter with an obsessed intruder, the alleged stalker, is accused of breaking into the star's mansion and then coming face to face with her. So we're going to be talking about an incident where Sandra's stalker literally broke into her home. This all went down back in 2014, and this man was stalking her for days before he was arrested at her Bel Air residence. So let me take you guys back to June 8th, 2014. At about 6.30 in the morning, Sandra was asleep in her bedroom on the home's second floor. On this day in particular, her son, Louis, wasn't at her home. He was with the babysitter. Sandra adopted Lewis back in 2010, and she decided to take her son to her apartment, which is up the street because she was going to have a late night. This is horrific. So she woke up because she heard strange noises coming from her exercise room. The exercise room is on the third floor of her home. So she got out of bed and tried to figure out what this noise was. When she walked into the workout room, she saw a man wearing a sweatshirt and pants. Sandra immediately realized something was wrong here and ran. Just how close America's sweetheart came to an alleged stalker inside her own home. Police say loud bangs woke up Sandra Bullock early one morning last month. That's when she saw a man dressed in dark clothes walking in her hallway right past her bedroom. Sandra then ran to her bedroom and then her closet, but she claims that if her son was home, she would have ran to his room, which would have changed their destiny forever. Look, son, Louie, was staying with a babysitter because that night she was attending Spike TV's Guy's Choice Awards. I'm still convinced that I I'm here because someone dropped out and they needed someone quickly and they know I'm home on Saturdays. So she had a normal night. She had a work event, the babysitter's taking care of her son. Everything was great until she saw this man in her home and now she's locked in her closet. Sandra was quoted saying that she was in her closet telling herself this doesn't end well because she's been watching 48 Hours and Dateline for years now. So she knows what happens when an intruder breaks in and they have a motive. Naturally, Sandra called the police and now we have that phone call and you can hear how scared Sandra is talking to the police officer. So let's go ahead and react to some of this. It's about a 16 minute call, but they've trimmed it down to two minutes. I want emergency. My, someone has broken into my house. I'm hiding in the closet. They're in the house now. Um, yes, yes, they are. I just saw them walk into the attic. I have a, Is it a man or a I, woman. I think it was a man. What's your name, ma'am? Uh, Sandra Bullock. All right, Sandra, I'm going to stay on the phone with you till the officers get there, okay? Okay. I want you to let me know if you hear or see anything at all. I, I'm, I'm in my closet. I don't think I could see anything. I have a safe door in my bedroom, and I've, I've locked it, and I'm locked in the closet right now. Okay. Don't hang up. I'm going to be dispatching the police, okay? Don't hang up okay. on me. Do you have any weapons? Are you armed? Um, no, I'm not. I hear someone banging on the door. Is so your bedroom? Okay. Yes. 829 suspects now attempting to gain entry to the bedroom. Are they close? I don't, we don't have a way to track where they are. I just know that okay. they've been in route for about four minutes since the okay. call came in. Okay, there's an officer pulling up now. Do not go out there. Do what? I'm sorry? I said do not go out there. Okay, okay. and just I'm, I'm have them walk them. I'll stay right here. I'm going to let you know what they're going to do, okay? Is that them knocking at my door? Are you knocking on the door? I hear them. In the, I hear them. And tell them, no, I saw the guy go upstairs into my attic. They're entering, so they've got an open door, them. so they're coming they're, in, okay? Uh, I hear them, yeah. Thank you so much for being so Thank you. Three, five, seven, five, six, Okay, they're taking him into custody now. Oh, they have him? They have him. You can hang up. Thank you, ma'am. 
Okay, thank you so much. That is so scary. I can't imagine being in that moment, and it really just sounds like an excerpt from a horror film. It only took the police a few minutes to get to her home, thank God, and they found a 39-year-old man named Joshua there. When they got him into custody, they realized that he had a bunch of different things, including photos of Sandra and some more things. A-list actress locked herself in and called police. When they arrived at her Hollywood home, they say Joshua J. James Corbett was inside and that he screamed, Sandy, I'm sorry, please don't press charges. He's over here calling Sandra Sandy like they know each other and he doesn't want her to press charges even though she's scared for her life. And I would be too because he not only had photos of her but also had letters that he had written to her and some of these letters are just next level. They saw Corbett walking down a staircase. He said, I'm sorry. I love you, Sandy. Detective Christina Carlozzi read a handwritten letter police say Corbett was carrying that morning, in which he professes his love for Bullock and says he wants to have sex with her. He also mentions her adopted son, Louie, who was not home at the time. So the letters he had professed his love for her and her young child. He also revealed that he was present at the American Film Institute Gala, the gala that Sandra was at three days before this incident. He wrote to Sandra that you could have had me today. However, you choose other people over me. I'll be around as you know. I love you. He continues, you are very special to me, and without you in my life, there is only misery. I've waited and waited and you never come. Perhaps this is all supposed to happen some other way. Maybe in Hawaii or on the street, who knows? And I have no idea and would only want to be a part of your life and miss you. I think about you every moment of every day. You are my girl. I saw you come home from the AFI gala and I was outside the entrance waiting for you. So it seems like he was trying to meet her at this gala, maybe like organically, but it didn't work. So he decided to break into her home. One of them read, you are very special to me. And without you in my life, there is only misery. Another said, I will forever be thinking of you and Louie, my son, as you are my wife by law. Along with his possessions, police also discovered that he had a small aircraft. I'm not sure how he could afford this aircraft, but supposedly he had already received eviction notices for it, so he wasn't paying the bills. But I wonder if he had this plane as part of a plan to like capture her and escape with her. We don't know those details. But we did find out how he broke into her home. He did so by scaling two gates and forcing his way through a glass door in the house's sunroom. But they're not entirely sure how long he was on the property, so I'm guessing guessing they didn't have cameras? When the police confronted him, of course he tried to act innocent. The stalker revealed to authorities that he had no intention of harming the actress. He intended to expose the inadequacies of her property's security system. So he told police that he didn't want to harm Sandra. He didn't even want to scare her. He just wanted to check out her security system and make sure it's Proof? Well, I'm not buying it, especially when police went to his home and found a bunch of illegal weapons. And even though they found these illegal weapons, they didn't charge him with those crimes. But he did, in fact, get charged for what he did to Sandra, as he should. Terrifying call was played here at the preliminary hearing at the L.A. Criminal Courts building. People in the courtroom were riveted, listening to her desperate pleas for help. I, I'm in my closet. I don't think you can see anything. Corbett is being held on $2 million bail. Cops say last June, Corbett climbed over Bullock's barbed wire fence and broke into her home. I'm glad she took him to court because there needs to be some protection here. Three years after the incident in 2017, he pled no contest to one felony of stalking and first degree residential burglary. He was then sentenced to five years probation and Sandra had a 10-year protective order issued against him. He was also ordered to go and seek mental health treatment, which I think is really important here. Sentenced to time in a mental hospital, but on June 30th of last year, he was quietly released, which shocked the actress and her attorney who thought he was going to be in for much longer. 
So that's got to be scary for Sandra because she finally gets this guy, you know, locked away after three long years. And then he's quietly released shortly after. But um, I, I don't know how to say this, like, unfortunately, but like, fortunately, I mean, it's unfortunate, but it's fortunate for Sandra that um, this man... He's no longer with us, so he's not a threat. Well, numerous sources have confirmed to us, including the coroner's office, that that man who is dead is Josh Corbett, and that name should be familiar if you know anything about the Sandra Bullock case, because he was a man who pleaded no contest to stalking her and threatening her. So a year after he was charged, police was back at Joshua's home, and this time it was involving the Sandra Bullock situation. I believe that he violated his protective order, so they came to go and, you know, figure it out but he ended up in a standoff with police and he took his own life he said the intention to come to this home where josh corbett lives was to arrest him they wouldn't say why but it's the same josh corbett who pleaded no contest to stalking sandra bullock what happened next was a standoff so police were there to go and check in on him, but uh, he wasn't complying. So things escalated very quickly until he ended up harming himself. We have been told, we haven't been able to confirm, but we have been told that the reason they came here to arrest him was that he had violated his probation. He still has a five-year probation. When detectives knocked on the door, Corbett told them, I'm going to kill you. And then the detectives retreated. The SWAT team was called in, and then just before one o'clock, when they entered the house, they found Corbett dead. There was no officer involved shooting. The officers fired no shots. Police will not say if Corbett shot himself or stabbed himself. We found out later on that he had harmed himself with a sharp object. He barricaded himself inside. There wasn't any gun involved, but he had taken his life. And I guess it was just like overwhelming with all of the legal you know struggles and the situation involving sandra who he believed was his wife sandra talked about this situation to jada pickett smith and she told them that she believes that the system failed him because this guy was clearly not mentally well and he was supposed to be getting help they left him out early he got himself into legal trouble and couldn't handle it he didn't have the right tools the coping mechanisms and he just succumbed to this situation Sandra claims that she now has PTSD from this situation and will just end up sobbing at random moments. She was quoted saying, I would look left out of a car, not right. I would look left and I would start sobbing. And I thought to myself, I'm a single parent and this child is going to absorb nothing but fear and trauma and shame from me in the most pivotal times of his life. And I was like, I don't want to drop that load of baggage onto my beautiful child. Sandra shares that she saw out a specific time type of therapy called EMDR, eye movement desensitization and reprocessing therapy to help her process what happened to her. The psychotherapy method is used to help individuals recover from trauma, PTSD, anxiety, depression, it looks like a bunch of different things. I'm glad that Sandra has those resources to go and seek the help and she shouldn't have ever gone through this in the first place. It's so wrong and it's just like it, it's an example of mental illness. This guy was clearly mentally sick and Sandra shouldn't have had to deal with that. There because he thought he had a relationship with her, albeit delusional, but that's what he thought. But he wasn't there to hurt her. <laughs> there is not a more clear cut case of stalking than this one. So this is another crazy Hollywood story I came across and I had to share with you guys. I want to hear what you guys think in the comments below. Here's my email. Let's go ahead and open this peel box package item from Elizabeth. It looks like they're from literally like Virginia, like very close to where like I'm from. Like, hey, we're like in the same neighborhood. Um, but it says Eats by Liz Jones. So let's go ahead and see what they sent me. Maybe it's like food or something. I don't know. I'm not trying to assume, but they said Eats. So let's see. Whoa. So first off, we have these super cute stickers right here. And then we've got this letter. Hi, Sloan. I've been watching your videos since COVID 2020. That's when I started. And I'm thankful for how you exposed Holly Weird and all the scary things that these celebrities are involved with. Perfect video. I now have a baby girl and knowing all these things, it truly hits different. I am so thankful for your platform and the way you still carry yourself humbly. I always wanted to send you something but never knew what. I recently became a Nut Pods ambassador, so I decided to send you some of my favorite. Ooh, they're all plant-based and unsweetened. The flavors are toasted marshmallow, French vanilla, cinnamon, um, and it looks like you have a code Eats by Liz for 15% off Eats by Liz Jones. So I will include all that information below. They can click the link on IGQ. And once again, thank you for my small family for the 
dedication and hard work. Oh, that is so sweet. God bless you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. I love that, Liz. And like, there's some of the information there. Cute. We love that. And I will list everything below. And oh my gosh, first off, I've been wanting one of these things for so long, a milk frother. Like I see people like mix matcha and things with that. I'm so excited. I really want to like make a matcha drink. Oh my gosh, comment below if you like know any recipes. And then here's that creamer that she was talking about. And this is like a heavy packaging. Like what the, there's a lot in here, but or, or they like big bottles. Let's go ahead and see. So we've got um, French vanilla, toasted marshmallow and cinnamon swirl. Oh, nice, cute. I like that. That's awesome. Thank you so much. If you guys want to go and check it out, I'll list everything below, but I'll see you guys in a new video. I love marshmallows. I'm like toasted marshmallow. Hmm. But I'll see you guys in a new video soon. Bye guys. <laughs>